This video is for helping users install a computer motherboard. As always, when working inside your computer, turn it off, make sure it's unplugged, and that you're properly grounded to protect your computer from electric static discharge. Before a motherboard can be securely placed into a bare bones system, the standoffs need to be inserted in the matching locations of the screw holes on your motherboard. In this picture is an example of a standoff screwed into the case. These are what allow the motherboard to be attached to the case. If this is a new computer case, these should have been included with the case. Some standoffs are also plastic clips that allow the user to clip the motherboard into the case. If you're using this type of standoff, you'll want to attach them to the motherboard first and then snap the motherboard into the case. This picture shows another example of a standoff that may have already been permanently fitted into the case. This type of standoff is used to help hold the motherboard and to make sure it's inserted properly. No screw is inserted into this type of a standoff. Next, before the motherboard can be inserted, you must insert the motherboard backplane, also known as the in and out panel, either that came with the motherboard or the case. This helps keep the motherboard secure, the case more airtight, and helps prevent any interference from outside electronics. Make sure that if the backplane has holes that are not punched out, that they are punched out before installing the motherboard. Also, many backplanes may have all holes punched out, as shown in this picture. For these type of backplanes, usually the motherboard will include a shielding label that can be placed over these holes. In this video, you can see how the motherboard is inserted into the computer. You'll notice that this is a bare bones case, making it much easier to insert the motherboard. If you're replacing the motherboard, make sure anything that may interfere with the insertion or removal of the motherboard is removed first to prevent any damage. Make sure the motherboard is placed onto each of the standoffs and that the back connectors are lined up properly on the back of the case. Once verified, screw the motherboard to the standoffs. Next, if your case has front panel cables like the one shown here, connect these cables to the motherboard. As can be seen in these pictures, this case has labeled cables making it easier to connect each of the cables properly to the labeled connectors on the motherboard. If you're having a hard time reading the labels or identifying what connects where, you must consult your motherboard's documentation for proper method of installing these cables. If you do not have the manual for the motherboard, often an electronic version can be found online. Finally, the motherboard must be connected to the power supply, memory must be installed, and the processor must be inserted into the motherboard. These steps have been broken into their own videos and can also be found on our website. If your motherboard is not working or you have other questions, feel free to visit ComputerHope.com.